so, so next up we've got Eric Gardner. Um, I'm really excited to see this talk because I'm a massive static site generator nerd. Who'd have thought it? Uh, and, uh, and I'm really curious to see where static site generators can get used. Um, it feels like there's lots of different applications of it. I love stuff that applies things and make, it, like, create, uses a template and creates an interesting output. Okay. Um, I'm also a big kind of nerd for, for print design as well. I mean, there okay, cool. are there any designers in the so room? Anyone who would so describe well. themselves as a designer? Okay, a handful. It'd be nice to have uh, them. Um, uh, of those designers, I, would you say you are designers for what? Me for yeah. um, for web design? Any of you got a background in print design? Oh, there's uh, a smattering. Okay, a smattering. Interesting, because I know it's a slightly different beast. Uh, there's some slightly different constraints. Uh, it's, a, it's a different animal. Um, and so we're going to hear a little bit about that today, because um, yeah. you know th this talk from from Eric uh, is going to look at static sites uh, generators. Uh, and use and like how they can be used for for books uh, and not just digital books but potentially for print as well so i'm very very interested in in hearing about this please make him very very welcome give him a warm welcome for his 10 minutes it's eric gardner hi everyone uh thanks so much for being here this evening my name is eric gardner and uh, i'm a software engineer at rumors which is a design studio in portland I've been passionate about the technology of the Jamstack since before that acronym existed. Um, and tonight I'd like to talk about one application of that technology that I hope you find interesting, which is using static web technology as a system for digital publishing. Uh, so first, some background. Uh, prior to joining Rumors in Portland, I worked for several years as a software developer at the Getty Museum in Los Angeles. Has anyone heard of the Getty? Um, this was just another day at the office uh, back when I worked there. Um, I highly recommend a visit if you're ever in LA. The architecture alone is pretty amazing and the admission is free. Uh, so the Getty is a world-class art museum and it also houses a publishing department um, that produces dozens of art-related books each year. And these range from popular titles to kind of scholarly oriented things that are enormous and massive and expensive, but also very beautiful. Uh, so I worked within this department during my time there. Um, and when I arrived, uh, the mandate that I was given was find a way to publish the museum's collection catalogs in a digital format. A collection catalog is like a, a scholarly tool, you know, mainly for art history research uh, that would have a series of plates of all of the works in a particular collection. So they're very large, very expensive, uh, sell to a really limited audience. So let's make these in a digital format. Previous attempts to shoehorn these kind of academic publications into a, a CMS just didn't work very well. It wasn't a good match for the kind of content. Um, and these projects were very hard to maintain. You know, they started feeling obsolete even just a few years after they were launched. Uh, so we didn't want to go down that route. Um, I was there as part of a team of two on uh, the digital publication team. So I was the developer. There was also a product manager. And we were embedded in a larger print publishing department uh, that had a lot of brilliant designers, um, you know, print production wizards, editors, people that really loved the craft of making books. And so because the bar was set so high, uh, we didn't want to lose the beautiful design and also the long-term availability of the printed books. These are two great features uh, that we wanted to maintain in a digital version. So we found a solution based on static site generator technology, uh, or what you'd now call the Jamstack. So we began publishing books this way in 2016 with ancient terracottas from South Italy and Sicily. Uh, since then, a total of six major publications have been produced this way, uh, scholarly publications, um, at the museum, and there are several more in the pipeline. And I'm going to talk mostly about the first trilogy that you can see here. So all of these are available online at getty.edu slash publications slash digital. And they're also open source. And all the code is available at github.com slash gettypubs. So feel free to take a look. Since this is a tech conference, uh, here's a quick overview of the tech stack for these projects. Uh, we built them on top of the middleman static site generator. Uh, Thomas Reynolds was here speaking earlier. Um, this was a great tool. Uh, there was a plain text backend, so all of the source content was in simple text files, uh, Markdown and YAML primarily, and lived in GitHub. We used Vue.js and other JavaScript libraries for uh, interactive UI elements on the front end. Uh, and then we used Prince XML and uh, CSS3 for PDF generation at build time. I'll talk a little bit more about uh, this later on. So um, I'm going to highlight a couple of features of these projects that I think might be interesting here. So first, we wanted the products we were creating to feel like books. Um, we wanted a book-like reading experience. Uh, the simplicity of building sites on top of static generator technology allowed us to really focus on things like uh, creating a great reading experience, responsive design, et cetera. So you can see some examples of that design here. 
we were inspired by sites like Medium, and we wanted to deliver an elegant, uh, distraction-free experience to the reader. Um, and so because we didn't have to worry about databases and server provisioning and all this other stuff, I feel like we were able to, to focus on that. Uh, another key feature was making the full text of the books searchable. And we used the Lunar.js library for this feature. Uh, Lunar, you can see an example of that UI in action here. So uh, Lunar is described by its, by its creator as a little bit like solar, but smaller and not as bright. Uh, we still thought, thought it was pretty amazing. No server was required for that uh, at all. Like we generated a JSON index at build time that was consumed by the client at runtime, but it provided full text search for a static site. Um, so building a JSON index of all text pages in middleman is pretty straightforward because uh, you have all of Ruby at your disposal. Uh, the software has a sitemap object that you can query and manipulate in various ways. So this is an abbreviated, an abbreviated example of how we looped through the pages and constructed a simple data structure that contained you know, all of the text of the book and some basic metadata, which is then rendered as JSON. On the client side, we would just feed that to Lunar um, when the user is browsing the site. And you can assign a different weight to different fields uh, to you know, give more emphasis to things found in the title, for example. Um, another key feature was deep zoom images. Uh, we, we provided this with the leaflet.js library. So leaflet is an open source mapping library, but it also supports deep zoom image display. You can see, see an example here. Uh, I wrote a simple Ruby script to uh, split up high resolution images from the museum into tiles at various levels of, of zoom and uploaded them to S3. The catalog entry pages, that you, like what you're seeing here, uh, then display the images with a zoomable interface, kind of like what you'd see for Google Maps. So we were able to display hundreds of views of dozens and dozens of artifacts at very high levels of detail, something that simply wouldn't be possible in a printed book. Um, another key feature was um, actually maps. So you can use Leaflet to also display maps, since it's a mapping tool. So this allowed us to connect artifacts with the locations where they were found or manufactured. Like, hey, this thing was found in this place called Toronto. This is great because in, in antiquity, the names of a lot of places have changed. So you could just show the exact location, um, you know, ancient name, modern name, side by side. Uh, we also had you know, dynamic UI components using Vue.js. So uh, these catalogs were primarily composed of static HTML generated from middleman, but sometimes more interactivity is required, and Vue.js was a very useful tool for building complex UI components like this. Um, it's pretty easy to drop in a Vue component into an otherwise static web page. So this is an example from the Ancient Lamps catalog, uh, which contained over 600 entries. So using uh, the Vue.js computed properties feature, it was very easy to do things like filter and sort over a large collection of data instantaneously. Uh, you know, so, hey, I want to only see things from 50 BC to 300 AD, and I only want the pots from Anatolia. OK, no problem. Um, Vue made that pretty easy. Uh, but I think the killer feature of these products was uh, the fact that we could also provide an EPUB, a PDF, and a print-on-demand version of the same material automatically. Uh, this is one place where middleman really shines out of all the static site generators. It's the easiest one to add custom functionality to. There's an extension API that lets you uh, hook into it at build time and you know, do various things. So this is where we uh, used a command line tool called Prince to basically grab a series of pages, generate them, uh, hit them with this command line tool, turn them into a PDF. Uh, this is an example of the kind of layouts we were able to produce uh, using CSS. This book was made with CSS. I'm happy to uh, share copies with people if uh, people want to take a look later. Um, we used the page media module to do this. Uh, it's not very well known, but it supports really sophisticated control over things like margins, columns, uh, page breaks, etc. Um, much of this spec is already implemented in major browsers, but the command line tool Prince, uh, which is unfortunately not open source, uh, offers probably the best support for this uh, part of CSS, and it was instrumental in gen generating the print edition. Uh, so uh, just to wrap up, I want to you know, leave you all with a couple of takeaways that we felt um, were apparent after these projects. So first, um, this was a, an exercise in building things that last. Compared to traditional books, most websites have a laughably short lifespan. Uh, but scholarly work needs to be available for years, if not decades, uh, so that future researchers can take advantage of it. The Jamstack, in my opinion, is a great way to mitigate this problem. Uh, between the human readable text files in Git, the static web versions that require no backend to serve up, uh, and the EPUB, PDF, and print versions that were generated at the same time, uh, I think that at least some version of these books is going to be available uh, decades from now. Another huge advantage of this approach uh, was I think it really supported cross-disciplinary collaboration. Because the code was very simple, the tech was so simple, it kind of lowered the barrier of entry for other collaborators on the project, uh, for non-specialists, non-tech people. So when your data looks like this, instead of some like, you know, database or something, it's a lot easier for uh, non-technical 
staff, like editors or designers, to get in here, see what's going on, make changes. Uh, this is what revisions to the book looked like. All the revisions lived in Git. Um, we, we were able to successfully train editors to use tools like GitHub and text editors uh, to you know, go in and make these changes themselves. One of our editors pictured in the center here, Ruth, she enjoyed the process so much she wrote about it for the Getty blog. So these are people with no tech background that were really kind of invited into the process. Uh, and finally, the development of these projects led to um, a open source digital publishing framework called Choir uh, that's still in active development at the Getty um, to produce these kind of things. It's kind of a toolkit to make these projects easier to build. So Choir builds on top of the Hugo static site generator, and there's, there's a CLI written in Node uh, that supports uh, building additional publication formats, PDF, EPUB, etc. So this project is still in the alpha stages, but several museums and small publishers have already used it for things that they're you know, working on in production now. And there's a GitHub repo here, github.com slash gettypubs slash choir, Q-U-I-R-E. Uh, before I wrap up, I just want to acknowledge um, some of the amazing open source tools that made these projects possible. Um, Middleman, Vue.js, Leaflet, Lunar, um, things like that. Uh, so much of what we did would not have been possible without all this amazing open source work. And uh, finally, I just want to leave you all with a challenge, um, which uh, is, build things at last. Um, I think we have great tools at our disposal to do that. So um, yeah, that's, that's my challenge for you. Thanks a lot. <laughs>